God damn it, I just picked my SRM short range brawler and I dropped on Alpine Peaks. Oh no, I just picked my ER large long range direwolf and I dropped on Solaris City. Are you tired of this shit? If you are, then maybe faction play is for you. Hello people, I am Data from JGX and today we will talk about faction play why you should play it, and how, for beginners who just don't understand the interface. Before we start, please remember to subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and share the content with your friends. So, why faction play? Um, the reason why faction play is my favorite game mode is, first, that you see the map, and then you choose the mech. So you can always pick the mech that is right for that kind of environment. You drop on a short range map, you take a short range mech. You drop on a long range map, you take a long range mech. Like this is the key for me. I hate quick play. And I play faction play every time it is possible, it is viable, it, it, you have a, an available match. Because I love dropping in a mech that is adequate for the environment. So this is reason number one. Reason number two, I'm tired of NASCAR. If you're tired about NASCAR every time, being forced to drop a mech that goes minimum 60 kph otherwise you get left in the back and get swarmed by a flocks by flocks of lights having to constantly rotate 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 otherwise if you are the last one of the tail you get annihilated like by three four mechs together being forced to follow your team into a death trap, into a pit, because they just don't understand how to use power positioning, and they just rotate, go into bad positions and die, and you have to follow them, otherwise you get left in the back and, and you die alone. If you're tired about this shit as well, and then maybe faction play is for you. Because in faction play, the maps are designed in a different way. This is a siege specific map, Emerald Taiga. Um, siege is a game mode that belongs only to faction play. We will be on that in a minute. But the point is that gameplay wise, the maps are one directional. So they go in just one direction. You, can, you need to cross the gates, you go forward. This is the base and the defender spawns from here and defense the base. So there is no um, room for rotating all over the place like a, a bunch of brainless chickens. The enemy is in the front. You fight your enemy, the enemy is in the front, that's it. Of course, something can happen on the flanks, but for example, they can't climb up here, rotate from the back, and then jump at your ass from behind. They can't do that. So it's just pure skill. The enemy's in the front, you shoot them, they shoot you, best aim wins. And that's it, there's no cheap tricks. Like I'm gonna put a light three kilometers in your back, I'm gonna lock you for LRMs. It's way less likely to happen. It can happen, of course it can. For example, there is a strange spot on Boreal Vault to do that, but whatever, it's the exception, not the rule. So let's get into the interface. How you drop in faction play, because I get that the interface is a little bit strange, uh, it's not clear, so it needs to be explained. Okay, so the first thing you do is that you need to understand that faction play is a respawn mode. So you need four mechs. 
you keep respawning in the same place unless you change lens. But let's say that you keep spawning in the same place. When you die, you take the next mech. Faction play can happen in uh, quick play maps or in siege maps. But even when it drops in quick play maps, due to the nature of the game mode, because there is the respawn, it's way less common to NASCAR. Because when a, pe a, um, a person dies, it will respawn in the same place, in the back. So people tend to play more stationary or just push straight forward without many cheap tricks because of, because of the fact that there are the respawns. So the first thing is you go to manage drop decks. This is a relic from a deleted game mode. Scouting doesn't exist anymore. So ignore scouting drop decks. Go to invasion drop decks. You will have two drop decks. I suggest you to keep one for the clans and one for the inner sphere. Um, inner sphere is maximum 265 tons. You have to split those tons between your four mechs. You can even drop under tonnage if you want. Clan is, is 255. We will try to get it to 265 soon, but no promise. There, there is a discussion on the cauldron about this topic, but PGI is not that interested in, uh, in faction play. So you do one deck for the clans and one deck for the Inner Sphere. How do you build a deck? Let's assume that um, it will look like this, clear, empty. You click on the first card. This light down here tells you that you are selecting this card. You start from the assaults. Uh, you can go both, try it, whatever. Um, let's say that I want to build a long-range deck because, again, you first see the map and then you take the max. So if I drop on a long-range map, I'm not going to bring a brawling atlas. I'm going to bring a long-range deck. Battlemaster or Stalker. I just want to try the Battlemaster because they got recently quirked. Again, another Battlemaster. Firebrand, ER Lodge. Every time you click, it automatically brings you to the next card. Firebrand, and then an Anti-Light with high DPS. Osiris with streaks. 265. Don't go over tonnage because it won't let you launch. You may drop with trial max. I don't know what happens. Just don't go over tonnage. And uh, if you want to change a specific mech, you click on it. And then you, you click on the mech you want to change it into. Uh, you will not see the mechs that are already in the deck. So if you're looking here for these battle masters, you won't find them. They're missing because they're already in here. So if you want to change a mech, you click on the card that you want to change. And then you assign the new mech. But then you need to readjust the tonnage. So once you're done, if you have prepared you, your two drop decks, I would recommend, uh, if you have only two and you're a beginner, take some generic decks. So for example, the first mech, you take a long-range mech. The second one, you take mid-range. The third one, mid-range again. And the last one, you take brawling. So more or less, you are okay on every map and you can choose to start from another mech when you drop rather than dropping always with the long range first. You know, something with more variation. For example, if you want to take a generic deck, first one, Battlemaster long range with the Alage. Second one, let's take a mid-range mech, Laser Vomit, Stalker. The new one. I'll have to make a video on stalkers. I know. Stalker laser vomit. Third one, another mid range. Black Knight laser vomit. They're great. Last one, brawling mech. We are over tonnage by 10 tons. Flee 
brawl weights only 20 tons and you're good to go this is a generic deck and then press save every time or of course if you don't press save it won't save discard changes because i have already my mid-range my other decks um okay you go to faction play First of all, you choose what side you want to play on. Uh, this map doesn't make sense anymore. In the past, you could choose a specific faction, play only for that specific faction. You at chose to attack a planet belonging to another faction, and at the end, you, if you won, you also dropped your unit tags on that planet, and you started earning mech credits out of that planet. They deleted this system. I because they said because of population, but maybe they should have reduced it because it was fun to drop your tags on the planets. Now you just can't do it anymore. Like it's just random. Whatever. Um, so you choose the, at the moment there, there are no games. Usually faction play is very active during European prime time and North American prime time. Uh, you choose the faction. How? This is how many players on one side, how many players on the other side. Usually, you should choose the side that gives you quicker drops. There is no clan OP, there is no inner sphere OP. All the factions are pretty good. So... If there is, let's say, um, a side with 12 people and a side with 9 people, you should choose the side with 9. So as for the queue, you should drop in the side that has less people. In this moment, if I click in a sphere, I'm not going to drop because they're already at 12. But if I click clan, I'm going to insta-drop on the clan side. Now, I'm not because the, the queue is already full and people who add later on get skipped. Uh, the matchmaker works like this. The bigger groups get priority. So you start filling the queue. When it gets to 12 and 12, after a two minutes cycle, it drops. The bigger groups drop first. So, for example, if 12 single people get in the queue and they get to 12, but the game doesn't launch yet because the two minutes countdown hasn't terminated, um, and then a four man group drops in, the four man group will drop in the game even if the four even if all the 12 single people joined the queue earlier. What will happen in this case is that the last four individual people that dropped, that tried to drop, will get skipped and wait for the next match. So you are suggested to make a group of at least two, three people and then try to go. For example, if right now I take a 12-man pre-made and I drop, I'm going to put all those people out and I'm going to drop with my 12-man pre-made. Because yes, in faction play, you can drop with a 12-man pre-made. You are suggested to go with at least a 4-man. As for the tier, there is no tier. So you can find tier 1s, tier 5s, tier 4, cadets, all in the same games. This means here that the game just dropped, for example. So you are suggested to go in faction play with your own friends. So what are we doing here? Uh, first, you choose what faction you want. For example, let's say that I want to drop on this side. Uh, very important, if it is siege, right side is defense, left side is attack. You must know this. It's not random. 
This faction, if it drops on siege, will always defend. This faction will always attack. Right now, it's just clan versus inner sphere. So, even if I'm Karida, I'm going to drop on this side if I launch. Okay, so you understood now how to read this queue and you understood how to make your drop decks. Now, the game modes. These are the game modes that will appear in this bracket of time. From here, you see if it is more, more likely to get, give you a siege game or a domination game. The next thing you do, once you have understood what faction you want to, apparently people keep stacking in a sphere, so I'm more likely to get a drop if I, if I go clan. I want to change faction because I'm in a sphere and I want to go clan. What you do is faction details, clan, view factions, click a flag, pledge loyalty. Yes. In the past, so now I can drop on the clan side, playing for Clan Jade Falcon. Um, in the past, uh, you would have problems when breaking a loyalist contract. You would pay uh, loyalty points. Now, you don't. So just feel free to break contract and swap whenever you want. The rewards. Basically, when you play faction play with a certain faction, Mercenary, I, I, I've played a lot of faction play, so I have a lot of ranks on basically all of them. These ones are old, it, this is old stuff when you used to lose points when you changed faction, now you don't lose points. Um, so, every time you make points, you earn stuff. It's, you must notice that at rank 2, which is pretty easy to obtain, you'll get rank 2 in 4 or 5 games. You'll get a mech bay. At rank 6, you'll get another one. And at rank 10, you get a mech bay and 500 MCs for each faction. So what people do usually is that they take a faction, they get to rank... Six, they take a couple of mech bays because it's pretty easy to get there, and then they change faction. You get Karida, and then you go Moliao, Marek, you do all of them because the rewards, the rewards are, are for every single faction. You take the, the mech base from this, the mech base from this, the mech base from this, and so on. From this, you can track your progress. So, this tells me, for example, that I'm very close to get another mech bay out of the Liao. Okay, so once we're done with this, we selected our faction, we are ready to go. For example, uh, here, I'm clan, I want to drop clan, I click launch, it's not going to launch me. Because the drop deck that it selected here, it's an inner sphere one. So you must select a drop deck that is compatible with your faction, and now it's going to launch me. Okay, so... With this being said, there is the possibility that you drop like a bunch of pugs and on the other side you find a big pre-made. So at least for the siege, if you are a solo player, you are supposed, you are suggested to take the faction on the right. Because at least when it's siege, you will drop in defense. And it's easier to play in defense. Let's say that you want to change your max. When you launch, you'll get another screen when it, where it tells you the map and you have one minute and 30 seconds to rearrange your decks. So you don't need to have three trillions of decks as long as you have a piece of paper in your hands with the max written map by map. 
Okay, it is Vitric Forge. On Vitric Forge, I want this, 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 and that. You have one minute and 30 seconds to change four max. If you know what you're doing, you need way less. And then remember to press save, because if you don't press save, it's not going to change your max. Also, if you press save in the last millisecond, it's not going to change your max. You're going to drop with another deck. Again, even if you find a 12-man pre-made on the other side, you'll get stomped. Yes, I get stomped as well, because even if I do 3,000 damage, all the pugs with me don't even pass 500 damage, and we lose anyways. But at least this improves your skill a lot. Dropping and getting stomped by big pre-mades helps you with your skill, because in quick play, many times, you win even if you don't do shit because you get carried by the other guys. There is a um, tier-based matchmaker, so you get matched with people that have more or less, that are supposed to have more or less your skill. For example, if you're a cadet, you drop in tier 5, you won't find tier 1 people, and so on. In faction play, you find 12-man pre-mates, when in quick play, it's just maximum 4-man pre -made. But I like that, even if I lose, because I, I sharpen my skill. Because when people, oh, it's data on the other side, let's focus him. And I basically do a 1 versus 6 for the entire duration of the game, and my pugs lose as well. It may be frustrating for some, but it is a way to um, improve your skill a lot. Another thing you need to know is how to adapt to the maps. We will get through maps one by one in another video, but what you must know is that you can click on the maps like this in testing ground, press OK, Then you press F5 and you go in free camera mode and you're free to explore the maps. This is another siege map. Again, attacker spawn, defender spawn, the base, and you can go forward. And that's it. There is no NASCAR. No backstabbing, no NASCAR, that's it. So you can use this tool to access to these maps and understand what you would like to bring on this map. The more friends you bring in your group, the more you can dictate the strategy you're going to use. For example, if I play as a solo on this map, I'm going to take a long-range mech because there is a lot of long-range view. But if you drop in a bigger group, you can tell your friends to hug the wall with SRM bombers all here and jump the attackers like this when they cross the gates. It adds a lot of depth in the gameplay than just quick pug when you just drop around the mech, rotate like a chicken and that's it. As for the game modes, there are also the quick play maps as I told you before in faction play not all of them, just the large ones. And uh, again, there are the spawns on one side and on the other. People tend to respawn in the same place. Uh, drop ships try to defend your spawn by lasering who approaches. But spawn camping could be a problem because I think drop ships are not strong enough. And when you die, you just take the next mech. As for the siege game mode, very quickly, you get at the gates as an attacker, you destroy the generators that keep the doors closed, you destroy the turrets that are on the top, there is one here, there is one here, you destroy the turrets, you go forward, the objective is first destroy 
the three secondary generators that usually hide in here. You need to shoot on this gap one, two, and three. One, you once you destroy these, this one opens up and you can shoot the generator that is inside. And as an attacker, you win when you destroy this generator. As a defender, you win when you kill all the attackers or when the 30 minutes timer, 30 for this game mode, 25 for the faction play on quick play maps, runs out. So as a defender, you want to set up in the base and defend. As an attacker, you want to push, kill the first wave, and then when the defenders are respawning, uh, you use that time to start hammering the generators and then eventually kill Omega wave after wave after wave. And you have four waves, and that's it. If you want to drop as a group, you go from here, you create your group, you select faction play from up here, you add your friends, you select your drop deck, and then when you're ready, of course with your friends, group launch. And it's going to launch in faction play. Of course ensure that the faction is right for all the members, because for example, if uh, I select an inner sphere deck, it's going to flag it red, because I am a clan. So be sure you are all on the same side. Even if I'm Smoke Jaguar, my friend Ghost Beer, the other one is Clan Nova Cat, it doesn't matter, as long as you're all the same tech. So, the conclusions. You should play faction play if you want more depth into your game, if you want to adapt your mech specifically to the environment, and you're sick of dropping with short-range mechs on long-range maps, or with long-range mechs on short-range maps, or if you are sick of having to play like a headless chicken and just rotate all over the place with no sense, or getting ganked by a horde of lights if you just dare to hold a position. If you feel like this, then faction play is for you but I suggest you to play with at least a four-man group. I, la I launch solo, I don't mind getting stomped in faction play because I learn more. You learn a lot from, fa from faction play because it's, it's a hard game mode. It's not easy. If I get a good amount of views, likes, subscriptions, you know, I'm gonna keep forward on this topic. I'll eventually explain if people are interested, of course, because if people aren't interested, I just, I'll just quit it. Um, how to build specific drop decks for specific maps. I'll start analyzing specific maps one by one. I hope we can get there in the, in the near future. But for now, that's it for today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe turn the notifications on, share the content with your friends, and I'll catch you guys next time.